the theme is how to bring healing to the marriage. You know, uh, when there are problems with the marriage, how do we bring healing and also how to build up the marriage. Now, yesterday uh, there were two questions that uh, I want to answer here briefly. The first question was, um, what if, you know, the husband, you know, does good things to the wife and the wife uh, doesn't appreciate at all? Now, uh, you know, I want to say that in marriages, generally the problems come from both sides. Generally, it's not just one-sided. Uh, very often people just think, well, it's my wife's fault. Um, I want to, uh, I would like you to uh, think about the marriage. How much did you appreciate your wife? You know, if we appreciate the wife, and then we can also discuss about it and say, well, I want to build up a, uh, a family atmosphere of appreciation. So if every day that you appreciate what your wife does and the children do, and then, uh, then the atmosphere will affect everyone. So, you know, there are two things here. First, there is an agreement that, uh, that you can, you know, first you should have Bible study with the family members and pray. And, and then in the, uh, when you're doing that, then you can also, you know, say, uh, I would like to uh, talk about uh, um, the atmosphere of the family. How do we relate to one another? And then talk about, let's learn to appreciate each other. Just as Jesus said, you know, even when we give a cup of cold water to a little one, we will by no means lose our reward. That means God will uh, remember and appreciate us. God himself will appreciate us. So we should learn to appreciate each other also. So if uh, the, uh, the, the spouses appreciate each other, you know, uh, the husband get used to appreciating the wife, then the wife will also uh, pick that up. So, so, that, so think about how to build up a relationship uh, and an atmosphere of appreciating, appreciating one another and caring about one another. And then the second question is, what if every time when there is an agreement, then the wife shouts, yells? Um, now, also that can be built up in the family in the devotion time that uh, that it can be talked about that uh, you know that there are uh, diversity in the body of Christ you know the uh, Paul talked about that that in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that talks about that like in the body there are the eyes the ears and the hands and feet and then the the eye cannot say, you know, I, you know, I'm not the hand, therefore I, you know, I don't belong to the body. So, uh, in the body, there are different parts, and there is diversity. Each person is different from another person, and that is the diversity and the wisdom of God. The reason is because men are not perfect; people are not perfect. If all people are the same then they are all imperfect in the same way. But if, uh, you know, we are different, then one person see, you know, certain needs, you know, like he see the need A, uh, and also he see the, the problem B. And then another person will see a need C and a problem D. So each person will see uh, different things and have different point of views, and then when everyone works together, then we can see uh, the whole picture. Like in a family, generally the wife would pay more attention to little details in the family. So if um, in, a, in a family, you know, uh, the, the wife would see the details and then the husband generally see uh, uh, work or activity or direction more, then the husband will see something else, you know, like for instance, uh, what should we do in the future? Uh, now, if I use an illustration in a church, uh, the pastor might see the direction of the church more, how to bring growth, 
to the whole church. And then the women will see the details. How do you do that? How do you bring growth to the whole church? How do you meet the needs of the people? So the pastor and the women in a church will see different things. Now that is the advantage because if the pastor only see little details, he will not see the large picture. Now he sees the large picture and then the women will see the details and then when they work together, then the pastor can have the vision to bring the growth to the church. And then at the same time, the women will tell him, you know, how to bring, uh, you know, care about different people and how to do different things, uh, the detail of doing diff different things so that everyone is taken care of and so that uh, all the activities uh, that, that you take care of every detail of the activities. So that is the advantage of people being different. So if we talk about that, uh, so if you are the person that you say, well, you're, uh, w whenever you say anything different from your wife and then your wife would get angry, then uh, you can t tell her about this. But when you tell her, don't, don't rebuke her. Just tell her that this is uh, a fact of life. And then when we all you know, see that, uh, you know, that each person has different gifts and then we work together, then it will make the church better and will make the family better. For instance, in my ministry, you know, I'm strong in teaching and training. And then some other people, uh, they are strong in seeing visions. Uh, some are strong in uh, doing little details. And and then my wife can see details and uh, different, and she uh, also is a very logical person. She see, you know, uh, if I want to teach something, how, what is the logical way to present it? At the same time, how to be sensitive to the needs of the people. So she's very sensitive to the needs of the people, and also she's very good in communication to listening to people. So we work together, and then my wife gave, uh, gave me suggestions, and then I listen to her, and then I can, uh, you know, I can meet the needs of different people. So that is the strength of that, uh, that people are different. That's how God is uh, very uh, creative, and uh, He has the wisdom. Uh, he know that uh, he knew that ahead of time, and that is why he he created people different. So when husband and wife understand that, then they will pay attention to the strength of the other person, and then they will say, "Okay, uh, actually, no two persons in the world would be the same. Everyone is different." So when people work together, they have to accept the difference, the differences of the other person, and then work together, and. So um, in a family, they can understand this. And then uh, I want to uh, respond to the two questions to say that uh, when the husband says, well, how come the wife has this problem? So I hope you know, that the husband will also see their own problems because in marriage generally it's two-sided. That's us. Uh, Generally, the man will only see the problem of the woman, and the woman will only see the problem of the man. So it's better that we, you know, we have a whole picture and be kind to one another. Have an atmosphere of caring and appreciation, of apologizing to one another, and listening to the other person and responding to the other person. Then, uh, in a in a marriage, then there is. Uh, then uh, that both of them will be able to communicate and give suggestions without offending the other person. We don't have to offend any, any person by uh, giving, uh, giving some suggestions. You know, giving suggestions doesn't mean we have to offend the other person. We can say it gently. Uh, so that's something we need to learn. Uh, now, many people have this uh, they grew up in this culture. The culture is when there is anything wrong, when there is anything, any problem, when there is any difference, then they, the reaction is yelling. They think that yelling is the way that, uh, to solve the problem, but actually yelling 
we create more problem. So when we understand this, we'll say, okay, when we see any problem, the way is to, you know, uh, communicate peacefully, talk peacefully. So you can let your family watch this video and tell them the details and at the same time don't accuse them and just say how we can improve. So I hope this is helpful to you. Now if you have any more questions you can send it to me and then you know I can respond to you. Okay? Now um, now we go on to how to bring healing to the marriage and how to build up the, the, uh, the marriage. Okay now first thing is only love can heal a relationship. First uh, Peter 4 8 and above all things have fervent love for one another for love will cover a multitude of sins that love is uh, the factor that can heal bring healing to the to the family if there is any uh, uh, you know problem so love is the way and love means we want to do good to other people we want to make other people feel good we want them to feel loved. So whatever your wife wants, uh, now if it's reasonable, we do it to please her. And, uh, and also sometimes it's not just fulfilling uh, her requirement. We can actively do something. Like the picture here, the man is massaging the wife and we can do that uh, just naturally. Uh, naturally to do something to her that makes her feel comfortable. You know, I do that to my wife all the time, you know. Uh, when we're standing together, sometimes I would massa massage her and, and or hug her or kiss her and make her feel loved. That she knows that she's loved by me because I, com I communicate my love all the time. Now on the right hand side here is a picture. The woman bring the, uh, take the garbage to the man now, uh, by looking at the, at the face of the woman, it looks like she is giving pressure to the, other, to the man. But she can, instead of that, she can say, you know, uh, when you bring, uh, take the garbage out for me, I'm, I'll be very happy and I thank you for doing that. So saying nice things to one another. Now, I, I do nice things to my wife all the time and she does nice things to me all the time also. You know, whenever we come home, I always get the slippers for her. Uh, when I, when she comes home, uh, when I'm at home, I will always welcome her and hug her and kiss her and take her the stuff from her hands and then uh, I'll give her the slippers. And so we, whatever we can do to please one another, we'll do it. So I hope that we we'll all would do that to make other, the other person feel loved. And then when I, whenever I hear that my wife has a concern, then I will, I will find out what I can do for her. What, can I do anything to help her? Can I do anything to, you know, um, like maybe bring her some water? You know, actually, generally I prepare things for her that when she comes home, that there are things I prepare for her to eat. And so these are things we can do to make the other person feel loved and then also be willing to admit our faults and say sorry James 5 16 confess your trespasses to one another so when we have done something wrong we can say I'm sorry about that please forgive me so mix it make it a habit uh, actually when we say sorry it means a that we are a strong person only strong people can say sorry and then the other person should also learn to say oh it's fine I forgive you you know that to accept the forgiveness uh, accept the apology and to express appreciation that the other person would apologize and be willing to forgive that in Matthew 6 14 to 15 for if you forgive men that trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So we need to learn to forgive one another. Now in many mar marriages, the problem is that both sides remember the faults of the other person. 
Oh, you didn't do the dishes, you didn't take care of things in the family, you didn't put the clothing in place, you didn't help me, you didn't you know, use the money uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that you know, make the, it's hard for the family to have enough money. And so uh, both sides remember the faults of the other person. Then there is a lot of garbage in the hearts of both persons because they remember all the bad things. Now, you might say, well, w what if my wife does have many problems? Then we can guide her. You can guide her to understand and find a solution. Now, we'll talk about that later, about the words of, to say the words of the law, uh, to manage problem in a gentle way, instead of in a rough way, instead of criticizing her. We want to just talk about things and say, okay, I'd like to talk about this to find a solution. So that is the wise way to handle problem. And then we don't want to mention all the things uh, the other person has done wrong in the past that we we'll don't want to mention the past. Just you know, talk about now, what can we do? And then whenever we've done, uh, done anything wrong, we're willing to apologize and, and we're willing to forgive Okay, and then say words of grace to people born. So, words of grace. Now, God has words of grace to us. You know, God says, you know, God, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And God forgives us. God gives us opportunities. God cares about us. And God gives us spiritual gifts. And He appreciates whatever we do to the little ones. So, all these are words of grace from God and for people too we have words of grace to one another here you see number one I care about you I love you so I care about you you are important to me and then two I appreciate you you are precious uh, what you're doing is great and then thank you you are helpful so we can you know instead of just saying thank you we can say wow you're doing good, a good job what you've done is very helpful to me you know, like, I appreciate you, you are precious, uh, you are uh, uh, very helpful, you are wise. I told my wife many times, you are wise. Uh, you know, I, I told her many things, that, that she is good in many things. So then the other person will feel very happy. So we, we need to have this attitude of appreciation, appreciating people, saying good things about people all the time. You know, when your members do anything well, tell them, wow, you're doing a good job. Thank you, thank you. And uh, you have done well. You are great. You're doing well. Uh, you have efficiency. Uh, you are smart. You are uh, helpful. You are kind. You are nice to the people. And then five, you have tried very hard. You have worked hard. I noticed that you have worked hard. And I noticed your improvement. You have improved a lot. Since last time, you have improved a lot. You are, are working on improving yourself, and I really like that. And you have impact, impacted my life. You have influenced my life. You have done good things to my life. Eight, you have many gifts and many strengths. That you have spiritual gifts, and you're using them, and you have strengths. You're doing things well. So please say to your wife, you know, you're doing well. You. You cook well, you take care of the family well, you take care of the children well. Now, you might say, well, there are things she does well, but there are things she doesn't do well. When we appreciate one another, then she would do better in the things that she's not doing so well. When we appreciate you know, how, she, uh, you know, how she takes care of the children, then she will also pay attention to how she can do better. So. Appreciating people doesn't mean it will cause people to be lazy. Actually, it, they will feel very happy when we notice everything they do well. When we notice everything they do well, and then they will do better. They will have the motivation to do better. Okay, and then, uh, and then we say, God loves you, God likes you, and God will use you greatly, you know. And I like you too. So we can say things like, God likes you, God loves you, and I like you, and God will use you greatly, and you are very helpful to me. So we can say things like that to other people. So those are words of grace. So I hope you say that all the time to your family members, 
and to your church members. But we need to also handle problems, handle uh, situations, how to solve problems. Thank you.